Let's think about what it means for a sequence of numbers to go up by the same amount each step. Here's a sequence of numbers, and to get from one to the next, we always add the same amount. Plus four, plus four, plus four. A sequence like this is called arithmetic. If I take any two terms that are next to each other, subtract them, I'm gonna get the same number. This is a different kind of a regularly increasing sequence of numbers. Instead of adding the same thing, in this case, I multiply by the same thing. To get from any term to the next term, I always multiply by two. This type of regularly increasing sequence is called a geometric sequence. In a geometric sequence, if I take any two numbers that are next to each other and divide, I get the same thing. Musical scales give us a natural example of geometric sequences. Frequency is a way of measuring how high or low a note is. This is what 110 hertz sounds like, 220 hertz, 440 hertz. Notice in this sequence, to go from one A to the next A, the frequency doubles. So this is a geometric sequence, and the common ratio is two. The interval between two consecutive notes named A is called an octave. There are different ways of dividing up an octave into notes, and those give you different scales. The scale we're going to talk about is called even-tempered, and that means the space between consecutive notes is consistent. Even-tempered musical scales are quite popular, and one of the reasons is that they work well with transposition. Let's say I write a song, and it uses these three notes. Then someone comes along, and they would like to sing my song, but they can't sing that low. What they can do is they can transpose the song. They can take every single note and shift them by the same amount. So instead of A, B, C, they might be singing D, E, F. If the spaces between every note is consistent, if we have a geometric sequence, then the space between A and B sounds a lot like the space between D and E. And the space between B and C sounds a lot like the space between E and F. So if we choose an even-tempered musical scale, this higher version of the song should sound very much the same, just higher. I want the space from one note to the next to be consistent. And again, this is in a geometric sense, not an arithmetic sense. So to get from A to the next note, which is named B flat, don't worry about where the names come from, that's not important for this discussion, we're going to multiply 220 by some number, call it R for ratio. Then to get from B flat to the next note, B, we need to multiply by exactly the same number, R. So the frequency associated with B is going to be 220 R times R, or 220 R squared. To get from each note to the next, we go up in the same way. So the frequency associated with this second note A should be 220 times R to the power 12. However, we already also know that this frequency should be 440. So using that information, I can solve for R. I can figure out what the ratio should be between consecutive notes. Why don't you take a second, pause the video, find R. To go from G sharp to A, we should multiply 220 R to the 11th times R. So A should be 220 R to the 12th, but it should also be 440. If I divide both sides of this equation by 220, I see that R to the 12th should be two. So that tells me R needs to be the 12th root of two, or two to the one over 12. Now that I know my common ratio, I can figure out the frequency for all of these different notes. The frequency for B flat should be the frequency of A times R. The frequency of B should be the frequency of B flat times R, which I can write as 220 times two to the two over 12. And we continue on like this.
We said that making the space between notes the same, that makes it even tempered. This makes it easier to transpose our songs. So if I play something low and I play something high, they should sound roughly the same. But we didn't talk about why we divided this into 12 pieces. One of the reasons this scale is popular is because playing more than one note at the same time, playing chords, sounds kind of nice. This is A and C sharp, C sharp and E, A and E, and all three of them together makes an A major chord. If we weren't too concerned about how things actually sounded, we could take any interval and divide it into any number of equal intervals. So let's make our own scale. Let's go from 250 to 750, those are easy numbers to work with, and let's say we want to divide this interval into five equal intervals. Using exactly the same method we did before, you should be able to figure out the frequency of every note in between 250 and 750. So pause the video, figure out the ratio between consecutive notes in this new scale, and write down the frequency of these notes. Again, let's let R be our common ratio. To go from note 0 to note 1, I should multiply the frequency by R. To go from note 1 to note 2, I should note multiply the frequency by R, so I get R squared. Note 3 would be 250 R cubed. Note 4 would be 250 R to the 4th. And then note 5 would have to be 250 R to the 5th. So from here, I can solve for r. 750 is equal to 250 r to the power 5. Divide both sides by 250. 3 is equal to r to the power 5. So r is the fifth root of 3, or 3 to the 1 fifth. And that allows me to write down all of my frequencies. Note 1 is 250 times 3 to the 1 fifth. Note 2 is 250 times 3 to the 2 fifths, and so on. Now let's hear what the scale we invented sounds like. That's what the notes sound like individually. Now let's try making some chords. Thinking about musical frequencies is a good opportunity to quickly review vocabulary from the probability section, discrete versus continuous systems. On a violin, I can play this. I can get pretty much any frequency on that continuum, so this would be a continuous system. On the other hand, when I try to play that same thing on a mandolin, which is a fretted instrument, I get this. Instruments that have keys and frets tend to have only a discrete number of frequencies that they can play. Instead of being able to play any frequency between an A and a B flat, usually you're stuck playing only an A or only a B flat. I don't want to go too much into the music theory because this was just an example to talk about geometric sequences, but if you're interested, I'll add some links for you to learn more about different types of tuning, different types of scales, and there's also an online tone generator which will make a tone of any frequency that you like.